Hey, Knott's up here, and I wanted to show you a couple editing tricks I did in this latest episode here. But first off, I wanted to mention two things. One, this episode that we're looking at here, if you haven't seen it, it's the photography display head hack is the current title. I might have updated it since, but this video, if you haven't seen it, that's linked in the description and other episodes and videos that I mentioned in this tutorial, those will all be linked down in the description below. Be sure to check those out. And also this video that you're watching right now, this video is brought to you by my patrons. They have supported me. There's a few of them. You all that have supported me, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I just wanted to do a, a formal shout out. I wanted to name some people by name. Mel, Dustin, Melissa, Samuel, Peter, Joe. You all have been supporting me for a long time and I really appreciate it. And I know there's been some other supporters in the past that have since had to change their financial support. And I want to say thank you. The support genuinely goes into the channel. Those of you that have been thinking about it, Take a look, that link will be in the description as well. I know I put it in all the descriptions of my videos and I don't really talk about it that much, but videos like this that you're watching right here, these behind the scenes are the types of stuff I'd love to share more of. I've already shared some there that they've only seen. They're not publicly available. So if you're interested in supporting, it's a monthly subscription. I don't have it set up per video, so that way I can just make as many videos as I can and there's no burden on anyone that's helping support the channel of feeling like, oh, another video, how am I gonna afford this? Blah, blah, blah. Let's get into the editing. This episode here, if you haven't seen it, it's the Photography Studio Display Head Hack. And there's a couple little effects that happen in this episode that I think could easily get overlooked as just quick little fun effects, but like this first one I'm about to show you took me about two and a half hours. So let's get into it. I can show you how crazy I really am. So here's the actual video here. And you can see there that it's so boring. Let's make it cool. Yes. All right. So there it is. And if we jump in here, the original effect was just going to be a jump cut. And let me just get rid of some layers here so you can see what I'm talking about. So we'll get rid of that. So the original video was going to just go from this let's, to that. Let's, and let me solo that so you don't hear the sound effects. Let's. And it doesn't look too bad. I was like, that looks kind of good. But then I'm like, Premiere Pro has this transition effect called Morph Cut. And it's for interviews and things, and it hides jump cuts. Well, I use it sometimes just to mess around with video just to see what it might do. And what's neat about it is it actually sometimes works really well, and other times it's terrible, <laughs> which is no big deal. But for this, what it did was it sort of merged enough of the two clips because in the actual jump cut, if let me get rid of it here, in the actual jump cut, it's, hide that magazine, it jumps a little too much, like the head goes way up, boom, and that hand also changes. So I was like, all right, let's drop in a morph cut. And then I'm like, well, you know what, wouldn't it be kind of cool if I could have like, what if the morph cut if it didn't actually do enough, what if I actually added in like a, a magazine, which is what we're seeing here. And if we go to the actual footage, we'll reveal this in the project, it brings it up and we'll bring it over here. Here it is. It's a green screen. We knew that, right? And I got lazy and I set up the green screen and I just threw the magazine at the green screen. And I wanted to have it set up. You can see here, I did it I did it a ton of times. I did it way too much. I learned a lot by doing this. I learned one, don't be lazy and just open up <laughs> just open up the green screen so it covers the whole wall. I just didn't feel like unfolding at all. I thought I only need this long strip. The problem is if we actually look at the actual clip that I use, which is right here, it goes up and hits. And I was like, ooh, that's perfect. It, it sets just long enough to hide the effect and it, you kind of see that it's comics. The problem is right here, it's off green screen, which means, of course, I had to do a mask. So if we go up here to the difference mat, I had to mask off everything and here it is. So I had to go in and if you've ever used these mats, they're, they're definitely pretty nice. This probably could have been done in After Effects. I just wanted to keep it all self-contained within Premiere. And it worked. And I basically had to go frame by frame and mask 
that edge because if we turn off the actual ultra key, which is how I green screen that, zoom in here, let's get in here. It's it's kind of a pain in the butt. I'm gonna be honest with you, doing this kind of stuff is not fun. Luckily, it was only a few frames. I mean, considering this effect is like, maybe, what is it? It goes from 16 to 70. It's like one, two seconds. So, turn that ultra key back on. Ultra key, super nice green screen option. And the reason it's so dark, I also have a Lumetri color effect on my footage. And that's another reason why everything's running slow. It's just what I did. But anyways, without getting too off tangent on that, this is the effect that sort of stacked on top of itself in a, in a way where it was gonna be a simple jump cut, the magazine comes in, and the effect that it creates I love that Premiere forgot that I already had this all rendered. So that's always a good feeling when that happens. But you can see there, this effect took a long time. And there's something I wanted to show you real quick. So this is the clips that I did, and I recorded a whole bunch of them. This wasn't my first thought, though. My first thought was, I got some cardboard. I got some black poster board. I'll just Luma key it. So I just threw it up here. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, you know, just throw it up there. It hits the black screen and I'll just key out the black. Well, I didn't think about the fact that the comic book itself has these dark areas and those all got keyed out and it disappeared. It looked awful. And also when the magazine slid down, none of this was keyable. And I'm like, ah, oh. so I learned. So that's where the green screen long came in where it's like, oh, this makes a lot more sense. So that instantly I learned something there. There's something else that happened though, and I'm gonna bring it up here. Let's see if we can find it really quickly. So right here is another thing that happened, and this is unrelated to the editing, but it's very important. I wanted to share it with you. Let's watch. Throwing up the magazine. Ooh, right there. Do you see that? You can see that those audio bars spike. It's because when I leaned down, I was recording everything with an external mic because I wanted to get the live audio, and that's the live audio, so it makes the effect sell a little bit better. <laughs> But I accidentally stepped on the cord of the mic when I reached down to grab the magazine because it slid under the heater. And it pulled the whole camera and cord. And if you've watched my video cord holder episode, it's an older episode, it's worth watching where I use rubber bands to hold the cords. But I want you to watch this video real quick and show you what saved my camera inputs right here. This is where my camera mic plugs in. And as a tendency, I always leave a little slack just like that and then I'll wrap it around like this. And I know I've made a video in the past where I'll use a rubber band if I have one available and just kind of give it some slack. The idea is that if this mic cord gets pulled, it doesn't affect that input because if it's just hanging like this, if that gets pulled, it's gonna, it could mess up that input right there. So just as a quick little thing, I just wrap it around a few times so that takes the slack. So I can pull on that and it won't affect this up here. So that was just a little side note I wanted to mention because that was a real life thing that happened. And I think it was so important because it's stuff like this, you know, when you're just doing like quick, this is supposed to, this is like a two second effect. And I'm shooting all this B-roll footage and this little thing that happened that could have literally taken my entire camera, could have wrecked the inputs on it. It could have damaged the camera itself if it would have actually pulled over. But obviously don't step on the cords, but be prepared for that kind of stuff by giving those cords support. So be sure to check out that episode in the description. Link is there if you haven't seen it. Back to the editing, this little effect. It looks very subtle. Let me mute this and solo it on. So this right here was an effect I wanted to create, which is I wanted the head to rotate. And the rotating mechanism I'm using is another video I made where it's just the coolest, it's the best dollar I ever spent at the thrift store. It's a little self-winding rotating table and I did two full rotations of the mannequin head with the covering and another one without and this was all real like back here I had to switch it out so it's not the most technical that's what's kind of like I think what I was doing is I'm pretty sure I was watching there was a mark on the table here and when I swapped it boom <laughs> I moved it a lot too but it worked out and that way is how I ended up getting that back and forth cut where I could have it be switching. And this is just a simple jump cut. If we only watch just this one frame, 
Like obviously just, you know, simple jump cut. But I'm like, that's so basic. Like we've seen jump cuts before and that was the other reason I wanted to have it rotate because I thought it's gonna add so much, be so much more dynamic if it's moving. So in order to do that, you have to record two full length videos, one of the full rotation with nothing on it and a full rotation with. And in this case, I just clipped out the areas that I didn't want to show. So both of these are the exact same. They're both rotating the same. And any adjustments, speed adjustments, I had to make on both of them. It's kind of straightforward. This is 600% speed, and this is 600% speed. And if we jump ahead to the advanced area where I have the different things on, this was another thing where I'm like, I, I could easily just have this go and have be a jump cut with a static object, but how much more fun that it moves. And in this case, actually, it go, it doesn't just move forward. It goes, and then it rolls back because I wanted to show all of the stuff and there's, you know, there's reasons for it because there's like the cool little film fest hat and like a classic, this is from a classic episode of um, Quick Effects. And so this is a nested, there it is. I nested that because there's a stack in here. And if we get in here, you can see what I did was I just stacked these up. I synced everything so they had the exact same area that they were rotated. And then I put the same speed effects on every single one and then went through and just cut out the areas I didn't want to see and just set it up. Now this might be pretty straightforward and easy for you, but it was something that I'm like, I don't get to do this that often. And you don't think about it, but like to create something like this, you have to record each one of these in full rotation because I wasn't sure when I was going to cut to it. Because in some ways, it a hat this these hats look better as profiles i thought this wig looked funny because it had this big like mullet back here so this wig looks funnier as a side profile but i didn't want to just i can't just record just the side i had to record the full rotation and then each one of these clips has that full um rotation on it and i love that premiere does this where when you double click on it like that it gives you a zoomed in version which is just silly but what I did here is I got all the clips and the clips themselves were only about five seconds when they were sped up that fast. I dropped them in here and pasted them and then reversed the video. So that way I could get a full rotation one way, it stops and then rolls back the other way. And then the same systematic editing happens where I just go, okay, I wanna cut to this hat, cut that out. And these are all enabled. If you've never used this tool, this is actually, I think on the Mac keyboard, it's command shift E, even though there's not a shortcut listed here, this is able and disable function. This is something I use all the time in Premiere and it's available in most other editing software. It might be a different shortcut key, but that lets you keep all the footage there, but it just disappears. So it doesn't show up. And that is how you get a rotating jump cut. Now, when we jump ahead here into the actual edit of the time lapse of the project itself this is a, another setup if you haven't seen it check it out this is a rotating rig i show you how to build one of these rigs and this area right here is only like a little five foot square like so the the rig is another another i'm going to use it again dynamic it's a dynamic way of showing time lapse it could just be a static camera but i wanted it to move around so i use that rig setup and this rig is just an iPhone and I'm not even shooting time-lapse I'm actually using hyperlapse and the reason I choose to use hyperlapse is because if you look here if we zoom in let's get real close um, enlarge that this video clip here is at 4,000 percent I have it sped up super fast and the reason for that is because hyperlapse records every frame time-lapse records photos every few seconds or however you have it set up. And the reason I don't like that for some of these build projects is if I want to go back and show something in long form, you can't really slow down time lapse. But hyperlapse, you can slow down. And in this case, I could slow it down to where it right here, you can see it looks like it's almost static, like it's just sitting there, like right there. That's the hyperlapse. But then I can have a nice, slow, detailed shot of it. And you can see the rig sort of slowly moving here. But that's just a little thing. I call everything time lapse, but in most cases, there's some builds you might want to record in just video form, knowing that you're going to speed it up because it gives you so much more versatility. Once you do record time lapse as actual photo time lapse, you can't go back and smooth it out. And if there's a lot that can happen, if you have your increments set up as one per minute, let's say one photo a minute, because it's a really long time lapse, 
there's a lot that can happen in a minute and you'll lose it. And in this case, you can see I have moments where I have the hair dryer, but I only had that hair dryer out for a few, about a few minutes. So if this was time lapse, you'd only see it for like one second, one frame really, not even a second. And in this case, this is at 4,000 speed. You still see it for a while there as it rotates around and I'm using it. And that's just stuff for like tutorial. It's up to you, you can do whatever you want, but I know I prefer to use hyperlapse for these types of things because I still get the same effect as time lapse, but the versatility of long form video. This was shot with an iPhone and I have the clip on wide angle lens, the little Dollar Tree lens that I talked about in one of my episodes, uh, all the stuff you can get from the Dollar Tree. And you can see some vignetting around the edge and it's not the most high resolution. I actually set the exposure and then without realizing it, I turned this light on back here, which is sort of unfortunate. But as this time lapse spins around here, the camera was so close, I just needed the wide angle lens on it. But you can see how versatile that rig is. So again, check out those links in the description because there's some really cool episodes that all reference back to this one little simple build project. And I wanted to share some of that with you guys. I know I talk a little bit about this, which I feel like it gets lost in the episode. I might have to do a call out and just have its own thing where you can use a milk jug as a mannequin head. Little simple jump cuts set up in a dynamic way where there's a little bit more thought behind it. It, I feel like it adds so much more for such a simple effect. And it's fun, especially when you have a really cool audio track to edit to. It's just like, do, 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 do. Looks super easy, but there's a lot of time that goes into it and a lot of thinking. But I wanted to share it with you. I hope this video was helpful for you. Like I said, most of these videos like this, I only share on Patreon. So if you're interested in supporting me, you'll be able to check out more stuff like this and I'll be more inspired to make more because right now the few videos that are out there that are Patreon only, they only have like five or six views on them because only the patrons have watched them. So be sure to check that out. Check those links out. I appreciate you watching. I hope this was helpful. Leave any comments or questions in the comments and I will see ya when I see ya. Thanks for watching. Nop Top, go make something. It's so boring. Let's make it cool. Yes, like this.